Hello, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday with 3W. Wellness Wednesday is sponsored by 3W Medical for Women, a nonprofit medical clinic offering free of charge or low cost reproductive health services to women in the Seattle area, regardless of income or insurance status. 3W does not profit off of the reproductive health choices women make. The information shared in this podcast is the opinion of the speaker or speakers. Medical information is not intended as individual medical consultation, but for general education only. Always consult your own health professional for personalized advice regarding medical decisions. And if you're in the Seattle area, consider making an appointment to consult with us. I'm Helen Nguyen, CEO and co-founder of 3W Medical for Women and the host of today's podcast. Hi there, Wellness Wednesday listeners. Welcome back to Wellness Wednesday with 3W. Yours truly, this is Helen Nguyen. CEO of 3W Medical for Women. And today we're talking about another hot topic for us millennial women, cycle tracking. Right, Lauren? Yes. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Lauren yeah. here again. Yes, it's Lauren. You know it's going to be a good time when Helen and Lauren's in the studio. Yeah. Get ready for some chaos. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, oh, God. <laughs> um, but we have a program here called FEM, Fertility, Education, and Medical Management. And our dear Lauren, our operational manager, other than doing all these other things in the clinic, she also is our FEM instructor. Yes. And she's been through training. We paid for her to go through that training and she's certified and she's ready for your cycle tracking questions yes so we really want to promote this program because it's such a wonderful approach to just understanding your body more getting in tune with your body and who doesn't want to know what's going on with their bodies, right? Totally. Lauren? We have two tracks. We have the teen, we have teen track and we have like young adult tracks. And both of them just go in depth about what your body is doing, your hormone levels, all of that stuff. And so we thought we'd just jump on another podcast and talk about this wonderful program. Yeah, just educate you more about what FEM can really do for yeah. you. Yeah, and I think a really cool thing, cycle tracking is very big right now. Mm-hmm. It's very um, popular. I think a lot of people are realizing it's really accessible. It's easier mm-hmm. than they think it is. Yeah. It, it's really an amazing way to, to t- tap into our health. But I think when we don't know the why behind things of why am I seeing this, what happening Mm -hmm. can be a little bit more confusing because if you can understand what you're seeing but also why you're seeing that the pieces come together a lot easier and so Mm -hmm. I've had people who have tried to track on their own Mm -hmm. and then they come to the class and they just get the education of okay I'm seeing this but like Mm -hmm. what's happening inside us that I can't see Mm -hmm. and I think that's a really kind of light bulb moments happen when we can dive deeper into the education the biology the the scientific side Mm -hmm. of the hormone levels what's actually happening when the egg releases and all that stuff and then why we're seeing or feeling certain ways so I think that's one benefit of femme or any type of education where you're learning about your cycle versus Mm -hmm. just like oh, I feel this way and not getting the why behind it. Yeah. And I think once you get the why, which is so important, that's one of the reasons why 3W emphasize that evidence-based medical education behind everything that we do, Mm -hmm. because you should be fully informed. You should know the why. You should have full consent into what medical procedures you're involved in. So let's just dive in Mm -hmm. with Lauren. What is FEM and why? What interests you to become a certified FEM instructor. Yeah. So FEM, um, like Helen said, is called Fertility Education Medical Management. I am the fertility education side. So what FEM has done is it's a program that has brought together educators as well as doctors and medical professionals, providers, to help people be educated and track their cycle. And then if symptoms or issues are come awry, we can easily transfer you to a medical management side where the FEM providers know what cycle tracking is. They know what to look for, what hormones to test, what ultrasounds to order, all those things. And Mm -hmm. so what I do is identify and teach people how to track their fertile signs, how to track their menstrual bleeding, all the cycle one-on-one kind of things we're talking about, and also be able to identify, okay, is this a healthy pattern or is this an unhealthy state that you're in? Or maybe I don't know for sure, but it when you base it on the literature and the education, yeah, it might be linking to that. Mm -hmm. It might not be. It's not, not everyone's 
cycles are the same, but a lot mm-hmm. of times if the fem providers are seeing a pattern of an unhealthy pattern, which we can go into later potentially, they will look at their chart and then order said lab. So mm-hmm. I don't diagnose anything. I don't give these for sure, you know, d- d- diving deep into their medical issues, but I take the information that they're looking at and mm-hmm. then I allow them to say, okay, Based on the FEM guidelines, this would be considered an unhealthy cycle or something that's out of balance. Mm -hmm. And I recommend them to the medical management side. And I got really into this by working at 3W. I was a volunteer here before I was office manager that I came on in 2020. And I heard from you and another employee about tracking. Mm -hmm. And I was young. I was in college. I loved women's health. And I was like, okay, I just thought like, if you're sexually active, you have to be on birth control or if you're, and I always had this weird feeling of like, I don't feel like that's healthy for my body. And I never yeah. knew the science a lot about it behind it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I just think there's a better way, but I didn't get that information until I was at 3W and mm-hmm. I heard about how great it is. Mm-hmm. And then the femme position was open at the clinic and mm-hmm. we were kind of like, you're really into this and you're interested. Would yeah. you want to do it? And then I did it and I Yay! love it and I'm obsessed. <laughs> I really am. I have all my friends text me about their, Lauren, I got this LH test. I, I'm seeing cervical mucus. I'm yeah. just, it's, I really live and breathe it. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a powerful tool. And I think, and Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong. It's like just you talking about, you don't, you don't diagnose anything, yeah. but just having someone like you walk alongside someone that's just dipping their toes into tracking yeah. and affirming, yes, you are tracking correctly. Yeah. Yes, the things that you're seeing and the things that you're reporting is correct and right. accurate. That's just that's just like really upscale kind of service. Yeah, it's reassuring because yeah. I think people, I think I'm seeing this, but am I seeing this? Mm-hmm. Or I thought I saw this, but now that you explain it that way, I don't think that's what I saw. Right. Because a lot of times the app, the app, the fan app is great. A lot of these apps are great, but they're, they use these words like sticky, pasty, mm-hmm. fluid, moist. <laughs> and like, if you don't explain what those words mean or yeah. what the mucus might look like, Mm -hmm. it could be anything like and you and so you really need that explanation of like okay i saw this and i labeled this is that accurate Mm -hmm. yeah maybe it is maybe it's not and so we can really look and get that confidence of like okay i'm doing this correctly Mm -hmm. and yeah i have women who come in wanting to prevent pregnancy wanting to achieve pregnancy or just wanting to track for their health and that was Mm -hmm. me for two plus years i just wanted to know that I was ovulating because at the end of the day and something I love about femme is ovulation is a vital sign. It's a Mm -hmm. sign of health. It's Mm -hmm. telling us something about our body, that hormones are functioning, that we need these vital hormones for all different functions of our body. And so I love that femme starts out on the just that it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about the family planning or the, you know, intercourse part Mm -hmm. after, Mm -hmm. because really at the end of the day, every woman in childbearing age should be ovulating. Yeah. They're not, there is a concern. Mm-hmm. And we can talk about the intentions of if you're avoiding pregnancy, achieving pregnancy, just wanting to track. But if we can get to the baseline of like ovulation is healthy, mm-hmm. there's this innate sense of this is about me. It's yes. not about my relationships. Yeah. It's not about my. It's working on yourself. Yeah. It's not about, it's about, yeah. I mean, we do so much for our health. Yeah. We take vitamins, we work out, we mm-hmm. eat healthy. And If we're not listening to our fertility, we're missing a part of our health. We're Mm -hmm. missing a vital part. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of women don't really think about, I mean, they might think about it, but they don't maybe put emphasis on their fertility Mm -hmm. until they're ready for a baby. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to that point, it's kind of like, well, let's try this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can build, it can be you're ready for it, but your body might have not been ready. Right. And so if you can just focus on it being healthy and then when you are ready for a child or you are in a relationship where you're sexually active, it's come so easy. Because mm-hmm. for example, for me, I was tracking when I wasn't sexually active and then I became sexually active mm-hmm. and it was an easy transition into that. I didn't mm-hmm. need this big, and I, I still didn't associate it all with just my relationship. It was like, this is my thing mm-hmm. and it happens to work with what my goals are with my fertility. Yeah, And that was a cool thing of like, I didn't have to rewire yeah, your I didn't brain. Have to rewire. I, I didn't think about it more than I thought about it when I wasn't having sex. Right. I mean, that's yeah. really what it was. It was just like, this is what I was doing before and after. And I think it just can work with people at all stages of life. We say from first time they get their period to being menopausal, we will mm. teach women. I've taught women as young as 12, 13 in my mm-hmm. teen program. And I've taught someone who's about to go into menopause at 45. Wow. And it really can work for women at all stages of their life. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. it's such a it's such a wonderful health tool, mm -hmm. health resource that I think is so underutilized. Yeah. And it's one of the things that we really suggest to our patients when they come in frustrated with their hormonal birth control yeah. or their, their mucus patterns or yeah. discharge patterns. Yeah. Christy's always being like, go and do fem so you can see. And then, you know, if you're having something off, yes. you'll immediately know. Yes. Because a lot of people are like, okay, I might, I might see this other parts of the mouth. I don't know if I do. Is this normal? Is this not? And Christy always is like, go and talk to Lauren. Mm -hmm. Because then when you do know something's off, you can advocate for yourself and Absolutely. be like, I know that this is not normal. Yeah. And then you know your normal mucus mm -hmm. because we have a woman come in with fertile mucus and they're like, I, this seems off. Do I have bacterial vaginosis? Do I have yeah. a yeast infection? It's like, that's just your body yeah. doing its thing. Or they yeah. are having that and they're identifying that because it's not as normal as their mucus. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I really wish something like this was, was available for me when I was, you know, in my teens yeah. and just wondering like, what, what is this? And, 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 you know, you, you kind of dread that time of the month where you you have to wear a panty liner because yeah. you're just like, God, what is this? And is this, young, is it just yeah. me, you know, and, and you don't know that everybody else is going through the same things yeah. or not going through the same things and you should check that out. It would have saved a lot of headache and, and just questions and just sitting in this body that you think is doing something that you don't understand. Yeah, or almost like pun I think like there's this energy of like when you get your period the first like you're getting punished. Like, oh, you're a woman. Here you go. Yeah. Good luck. Like this sucks. And yes. I think them yeah. takes it takes the like ownership back of like, yes, there's negative parts about bleeding every month. There's mm -hmm. negative parts about maybe feeling different because of how our hormones function. Mm -hmm. But it's a sign of health and it's a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. And so we can be empowered to know mm -hmm. what's going on in our body. And that's so cool to be like, hey, I know I'm off. I know where I'm at in my cycle. And if you can focus on it being a healthy sign, it's going to create a more positive energy around getting your cycle mm -hmm. than not. I still don't like getting my cycle, my, my menstrual phase, but I know I ovulated. Yeah. I know that, okay, it's been you know, 13 days since I ovulated. So that's a really good, healthy luteal phase. Exactly. So that's a confirmation that I was tracking correctly. I mean, mm -hmm. it creates this different level of accountability and excitement when we know it's a healthy thing and not mm -hmm. just this thing. And I think I always talk to people that, uh, or I tell women, you're in control of your body. Mm -hmm. because you're not letting your body just change and you don't know why. And you're just saying, oh gosh, why do I feel these ways? You're saying, okay, I feel these ways. I know why I feel this way. Mm -hmm. And if I feel really intense, really up and down, really bad cramps, then I can advocate for myself and say, I have six months of tracking. And I know on this day of my cycle, I have debilitating cramps. On this mm -hmm. day of my cycle, I'm very emotional. Yeah, And that's when a doctor sees you one day out of the month, they can't they, diagnose they can't that. diagnose that. Yeah. You need data. And so that's why FEM and the FEM providers that know how to read the charts love that because yeah. they're getting so much more data than just an ultrasound and a blood test can do. And it's really putting the power back in the woman to say, hey, I know these things and I can advocate and be a change agent in my health and not mm -hmm. just be a passive person watching a doctor take care of me. Yeah. And I think that's so big in this culture of like transition to being, you know, patient centered care. Yes. Um, somebody yeah. who gets decisions in their health. And so this is like the biggest resource for having a decision in your health. Mm -hmm. I can't just say I have heavy periods. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. No, like here I yes. bleed for yeah. seven days. I'm going yeah. through six tampons in a day. Like yeah. that's heavy bleeding. Right. And so, so no one can like, you can't, Oh, you're fine, honey. <laughs> You're just a little so dismissive, so right? dismissive, and yeah. so now that I mean, and these vent providers, they want people to come in and get checked out, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of infertility, like you know, mm -hmm. is like just try for a year, you're fine. Yep. Fem, if you have two cycles where you think things are off, they want you to see a provider because yeah. they know ovulation and fertility links to our overall health. It's not yeah. just about fertility and you know trying to conceive a, a child. It's also impacts your health. And mm -hmm. so they want to see you. And I think that's really cool too. Well, I think FEM also digs into the the root causes, right? Like exactly. you were saying, it's like, okay, this 
you you could the labs that come back if they suggest that you do these extra steps to see why there is a why your cycle's off yeah. or why you're bleeding longer than the fra- phases that you're supposed to right. and all of that stuff like these labs can also then tell you okay you're pre-diabetic <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're you might have PCOS yeah. you might have endometriosis you might yeah. have all these things that can be addressed mm-hmm. and you're not in this cloud and this this like walking in this unknown sense of like your body's out of control but you can take control of it you can take back that power and say no i know exactly what's going on and i know how to change my diet and my lifestyle and my approach to not looking at my body as something apart from who i am so i think that's so empowering that more and more women are really attracted to cycle tracking and especially to femme is femme peer reviewed yes it is and they have studies that were actually created by like the doctors that founded the organization Mm -hmm. that are all peer reviewed so yeah yeah, it's peer reviewed it's evidence-based it's all the you know scientific words that that, that (laughs) confirm that it's you know accurate information a lot of research studies they've put on yeah a lot of um pro you know they've they've taken women where they put them under ultrasound watch when they ovulate link it to when they conceive you know they've done a lot of studies like that to really be able to show and prove accuracy in the tracking for trying to avoid pregnancy or achieve pregnancy Mm -hmm. for, you know, knowing the symptoms um, relating to when ovulation actually is. Because the only for surefire way to know you ovulated is being hooked up to an ultrasound machine Mm -hmm. and watching literally the egg leave the ovary into the fallopian tube. Yeah. And so that's not, we can't just sit. (laughs) I mean, you can ovulate at any time of the day. You can't just sit there with an ultrasound (laughs) on your ovary watching that egg come out. That's not practical. I mean, you can, but... uh, You won't. Yeah. (laughs) So these studies have done that, though, to confirm, you know, okay, they had their peak day on this day and they ovulate on this day and give just more scientific facts to why we do what we do and why we yeah. teach the way we do. I it. just I just really love that. And I just think about my own personal life in the sense of if I had this tool when I was much younger mm-hmm. and then, you know, I got married and then started having sex and it's just kind of like and wanted children and it's like, why is this not happening? And not being so disappointed in myself, I could have maybe predicted that at a much younger age and that would have spared a lot of just mental this this mental of like there's something broken with me yeah and i think that's really a cool way that we do fem is like it's it's not things you can control always it's Mm -hmm. how your body is maybe genetics environmental whatever it is and so if we kind of separate like there's you then there's your fertility your fertility is doing this yeah. Here's the tools that you can get to get there. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you're broken. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean you are you caused it to happen. Mm-hmm. And I think it having that conversation, having someone to mm-hmm. talk to in that is really enlightening. Mm-hmm. For infertility struggles with our periods are so is an isolating mm-hmm. thing. I mean, you oh, don't yeah. just walk up to someone and say, Yeah, I'm struggling with infertility. Yeah. You might to your friends, but even then it's like it's it's not mm-hmm fun to talk about always yeah i think to have someone to you know walk alongside to educate and then Mm -hmm. to advocate for you is really can be really empowering for people who are going through things yeah absolutely i also want to say and i don't know if it was me but this one couple i taught they were trying for like i think six or eight months Uh one class with me and they happened to get pregnant the next cycle (laughs) and i don't i I taught them the skills they were doing some of the things already but i kind of gave them like the full things and then they were pregnant the next one and i was like i have the magic touch i was like i'm not gonna say that was me but it kind of (laughs) was i I think you should take credit for it (laughs) so i mean there's there's so many good parts to cycle tracking and i like like we mentioned it's this new trend it's this new approach at looking at your fertility really enjoying your fertility and not Mm -hmm. feeling like you're trapped in this body that's doing random things and you don't know about and knowing you're gonna feel different yeah and that's okay yeah and you're not supposed to feel the same the whole month. Mm-hmm. I think that is so, and that's what a lot of people are getting into. Of like, okay, oh, I gosh. can I can change yeah. my lifestyle to certain parts of my cycle. I can eat different things during yeah. different parts of my cycle. It's really a really I cool. Know. Thing. It's so yeah. cool. But what are some misconceptions that people have about fem or cycle tracking in general? Yeah. One of the things that I know people always say it's like, oh, it's the rhythm method or it's the pullout yeah. method, <laughs> which is so. Yeah. Those are not scientifically no. proven things. Well, I mean, yeah, they're not. They might be based in some sort of truth at a, at a certain level. Sure. 
but they're not that accurate. No, and they're, they're not. not that consistent, if mm-hmm. you will. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think a big thing is that it's very, it's highly ineffective. That that you will get pregnant on it right away. There's kind of a joke within the people who are against it of uh-huh. like, oh, you're doing cycle tracking. When you do, like, when, yeah. like, like getting pregnant soon, like, um, <laughs> and it kind of is this running joke, like, it's just not going to work. I think it's an interesting approach to this. It's very different than traditional birth control. And it kind of comes down to the ownership of whose fault is it? Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Stay with me. I'm going to come around to this. Okay. Sometimes, you know, you take, let's say you take hormonal birth control and you take it every day still 90, 90% effective, it didn't mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, I blame the birth control pill. For people who track and maybe it didn't work, maybe the effect, the effect is really good. We'll get into the statistics in a second, but okay. it really goes back to yourself. Mm. And so I think it goes back to, did I not, and it's not always someone's fault, but did I not see something correctly? Was I taught incorrectly? Mm. Did I have an irregular cycle? That I, I was I was kind of basing off what I should expect and not what I actually saw. Mm-hmm. So those things, and then sometimes you are fertile, you know you're fertile, you have sex. Yeah. Self-accountability that that might result in a pregnancy. Yeah. Where when you use birth control or IUD, it's kind of controlled by that foreign. device or form. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. thing. Where when it's you're the one in charge, it's more like it comes down to you if you mess up. Yeah. And mess up, you know, whatever. We we can get messing up we're going to just say in this context of your intention was maybe to avoid pregnancy and it resulted in a pregnancy. Right. But when you go down to the actual facts, Mm-hmm. specifically for feminine, and that's what I can speak on because that's what I'm educated on. Mm-hmm. Combining cervical mucus and LH testing is 92 to 98% effective. Mm. That does not take into account some, I mean, it does take into account that people have irregular cycles. People have times where they ovulate earlier, ovulate later and weren't knowing that and or didn't see the mucus mm-hmm. or didn't have an accurate LH test, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But the birth control pill is 90% effective and so much more human error to missing a day, not knowing if you ovulate and then you ovulate the next day and you don't realize it. Mm-hmm. Where if you miss one day of tracking, okay, you can think back, was I fertile? Maybe, okay, but I, I didn't have sex, so I think I'll be okay. And mm-hmm. you can jump right back into it and doesn't throw off your entire body. Yeah. So I think, yeah, a big misconception is that it's really not an accurate form of birth control. And when it's based in your actual symptoms and not the rhythm method, which is just looking at the calendar, mm-hmm. most women do not have a 28-day cycle. Mm-hmm. So if you go off the rhythm method and you you are going off a 28-day cycle rhythm method, and you have a 34-day cycle, you're probably going to get pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Because you're ovulating later. Yes. And the rhythm cycle said you don't have sex during this week. Yeah. You're, the next week when you should have been in your luteal phase, your infertile time, you were ovulating, you had sex. Pull-up yeah. method, same way. We've talked about this before. Pre-ejaculatory fluid can have sperm in it. Yes. A failed, imperfect pull-out can happen. Mm-hmm. So when you do the... And I when I talk about this with my femme... Uh, students i always say these are the rules and i'm like feels like i'm controlling things i'm not saying you can't do certain things at certain time of the months but for highest effectiveness for fem to claim 98 percent effectiveness this is the rules you have to follow yeah to achieve what your goals are and i yeah. always tell people in relationships talk about where you're at in the intention scale mm-hmm. there's this great tool online created by the fertility awareness community of mm-hmm trying to avoid to trying to conceive and where you fall on if a pregnancy were to occur and getting on the same page with your partner I think is a really big deal um, because that can create I mean obviously open communication is huge and just knowing okay how strict are we going to stick to these rules that are set out by the methods to allow us to reach our full potential and and reach our fertility goals Mm -hmm. so I think that I always just recommend when people are sexually active, talk well, to your partner about I, what things are that. happening. I love that. And how we, you know, and and I think as a woman, if we're not, if we're going to engage in an intimate relationship with someone and they don't want to talk about elevating our health and understanding our fertility mm-hmm. and making sure that our bodies are healthy so oh, that we yeah. can engage in that intimate setting, that should be a really big red flag right. <laughs> for women to be like, hey, he doesn't give a crap about me being healthy yeah he'd rather just have the birth control so 
that I'm accessible or whatever. And it's like, we can't, I I think, you know, there's a running joke that millennials are special snowflakes and we don't (laughs) like to to have consequences in our lives, but that's not reality, you know? And I think having so much access to birth control and so much access to these devices that we put in our bodies, these foreign devices that we put in our bodies. And we walk around and we're walking around giving that responsibility, placing that responsibility on these other foreign things that could be helping in other ways, but it, it, it provides no accountability for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not realistic because our bodies are trying to tell us something and you're blocking that from happening. There could be other underlining health issues that you're not being aware of and it, it really passes the buck it does to someone else and i love that you point that out because femme not only is it a tool for fertility but it's a, a tool of accountability mm-hmm. and so much of us lack that these days yeah. and we get into addictive why you know we wonder why we get into addictive personalities because we're just allowed to indulge in what makes us feel good right because the reality is if you continue to have chocolate cake if you eat chocolate cake every day you're gonna get fat that's just the cause and effect <laughs> effect of eating a lot of chocolate cake. Yeah. I can I can attest to that. Um, so it, it, so it's like, okay, why do I have this problem and how do I master that yeah. and not have that be the driving force right. in, you know, my addictions of just feeding that all the time. Yeah. So yeah, and I think so it does, like you said, it does point to the relationship dynamics if mm-hmm. your spouse or partner really enjoys that you're living a really healthy lifestyle and you're wanting to tap into that mm-hmm. and empower yourself to know what's going on in your body and prepare for the future and and just be healthy versus I want the lowest risk possible. Well, mm-hmm. people might think the birth control is a lower risk of, of becoming pregnant. But oh, when you gosh. look at the side statistics, effects. well, the side effects, but if you look at the statistics, FEMS, even with just doing cervical mucus, not doing the LH testing, it's still a higher percentage, percentage. of accuracy than the birth control pill. Yeah. Everything's going to have pros and cons. Mm-hmm. I think when you can be in a healthy state and really are allowing your body to do its natural functions, it outweighs the cons of being fertile a certain point in the month and having to think about what you will engage in for your goals. Yeah. Yeah. To put it vaguely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I know our medical providers love it when folks are educated about their bodies to an extent where they can bring in evidence of like, oh, yeah. this is a pattern that I'm seeing. These are the symptoms. These are, I think these are the causes. It's like, it's so exciting for them to know that you want to go in depth about their bodies yeah. and they, they, they feed off of that energy. <laughs> no, they do. They do. Yeah. So it's, it's so exciting that we, we have someone like Lauren on our staff who just, eats this stuff up and mm-hmm. and and wants to educate others yeah. because it's such a powerful tool. And so if you are curious about FEM, if you're curious about cycle tracking or have questions about other forms of cycle tracking, please tap into to Lauren and her expertise on these topics. These and you can topics. even have a consultation with our provider and talk about oh, the different yeah. forms of birth control, their accuracy and kind of weigh your pros and cons with a provider. I mean, I can do that too. And I can do a consult and talk mm-hmm. about FEM, but I think they have really good knowledge as well. And yes. then seeing like, okay, is FEM something that I should go into or do I want to explore other options and us as a team me working with the medical providers and working in your care can really help you get the the answers that you're looking Mm -hmm. for so Mm -hmm. can you go over what the program looks like yeah Lauren traditionally we have three classes they're an hour I I usually sometimes go over because we just get talking get so excited so excited and we like to schedule them at least a month in advance or as however long we think your cycle is going to be so I can see a full month of tracking Mm -hmm. we do the next class a full month the tracking we do the next class we can do an intro conversation zoom call in person 15 to 30 minutes just to talk about what fem is kind of what we're talking about now the mm-hmm. pros and cons of it the what the classes look like the, the all of that mm-hmm and then any follow-up that's needed, looking at someone's chart after the three classes, we do free of charge. The classes are, again, the hour, and we charge $25 for them. And it's a great, yeah, just a great tool, too. Mm-hmm. And you can do classes with your friends. I've done group classes. Oh, it's so bring much your, fun. Yeah, bring your partner. We can. It doesn't cost more to bring your partner. Ask that, like, is it $25 yeah. for all of No, they are just <laughs> a guest in the room learning with you. And so, yeah, it's just, it's a really fun thing. And so we go over kind of the intro. Then we go deeper into the ideas after the month has passed. Mm-hmm. to allow that information to 
really be built on and mm-hmm. concrete. And then the third class, we focus more on the family planning side, mm-hmm. um, how the man plays a p- role, if you're sexually active, how that works. Um, yeah. and, and what kind of the, if your intentions are to avoid, what kind of those rules that I don't like to call them are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then what, um, if you're trying to- Guidelines. Yeah, guidelines. That's guidelines? a good one. <laughs> guidelines feels better. <laughs> and then um, if you're trying to achieve pregnancy when, you know, intercourse should happen, all of that. Yeah. So yeah. that's a great program. I just love it. And yeah. yeah, I'm always, I always tell my people, call me with questions in the middle of the month. I have this mucus or take photos and show mm-hmm. me when we come to class. Yes. Um, the amount of times I've seen people's LH test strips, <laughs> cervical mucus. I don't care. I'll yeah. see it all. I love yeah. to just help and and under, and have people understand. And it's just so amazing when I can see these like light bulb moments and people yeah. be like, I get it. Like I saw this. I confirmed revelation because I still get giddy when I confirm revelation. <laughs> like I did it. My body did it. And I realized what happened. So when I can see people get just really joyful over knowing yeah. and like taking education, seeing it in their body and then being able to apply it is just so fun. I love and it. And it's really non-daunting. You know, I am not a science person and if I can do it, you could do it. Yeah, it's like, it's, you don't need to read a whole biology no, we book. It, we or, keep it very simple. We, yeah. we simplify it. There are many dozens of hormones that play in our body. We yes. simple it down to four. Yeah. We talk about what's happening with the egg and what's going, what's happening if implantation happens, all of that. But we keep it very simple. We don't, change things we're not mm-hmm. changing with the biology but we're we're not teaching you biology 400 it's biology yes. 101 it's very <laughs> we're it's intro yeah <laughs> so and and you can build in research and yeah. i can talk more and that's kind of what the classes do is we start really basic and then we mm-hmm. can talk about how different hormones impact this stress all these things but we really awesome. keep it down to the four main hormones and femme medical providers will test all the hormones that we yeah. know play a part but when we learn about it we don't really need to know all of those yeah all the other hormones that play are very it's specific for people of mm-hmm. when their cortisol level rises their mm-hmm. blood sugar all that's very mm-hmm. simple we go back to estrogen progesterone lh and fsh and really talk about how those hormones work together and impact the body so cool guys yeah. i think you should really take advantage of it and lauren's available by for in-person classes or over zoom it's mm-hmm. very very accessible and she also has like a whole femme community to mm-hmm. tap into you know yeah. if there's something that you want to go in more in depth yeah, I can so ask. Yeah. We have a we have a email chain with all the fem certified teachers. Yeah, and I get emails all the time and just and I don't usually answer. I like to learn from it though, yeah. and I read about yeah. it. And so if we have questions that I don't have, I can ask yeah. our providers. I can ask my fem community, and yeah, it's it's just a really great resource. And all of that yeah. is just a benefit of doing it with us. It's mm-hmm. not any cost. You know, mm-hmm. like a question. Oh, I'm gonna charge you. No, yeah. We just have you pay for those classes because we really want you to invest in the time mm-hmm. and, and have an investment in it as well because mm-hmm. we're investing in you. So. Yeah. So you've heard it from us millions of times, but we really hope that you take advantage of this really great resource here in your community. It is so accessible and very affordable, and you literally have someone that just wants to walk beside you and and, and help you get prime health, yeah. right? So thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah, this is so fun. If you want to learn more about FEM and cycle tracking in general, please reach out to us on our website or come on in, make an appointment, give give us a call, and we'll we'll take you through your your cycle and how awesome it is. Yeah. So thanks so much for tuning in and we hope you have a great wellness Wednesday. For more information about 3W, please visit our website at 3wmedical.org. That's the number three, the letter W, medical.org. From there, you can learn more information about the services we provide. Book an appointment or make a donation if you'd like to support our mission. You can also call our office at 206-588-0311. That's 206-588-0311. If you like this episode, please share it with others and consider subscribing on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, stay healthy and be well.